we I realized when exiting last time that uh you have the option of turning on subtitles and commentary mode. So I turned that on and Oh, actually we need to maintain the butterfly thing. So I can't just keep jumping all the time. We'll grab this. We're gonna start running. But this is something super interesting. It's developer commentary. I always wanted wanna this listen game to be very meditative and relaxing, but I know there's a balance between keeping the player's interest. So I added this butterfly jumping mechanic just to like spice things up. I used a plugin called Playmaker for Unity, which in a visual editor lets you do interactive things, which is perfect for me because I do come from a film and design background. But on the flip side, I really wish I was good at code because this jumping mechanic, the jumping mechanic in the whole game actually has frustrated a lot of players. But hopefully I've been able to fine tune it so it should feel a lot better now. I would just hate that this meditative game would get frustrating. So I've definitely like, I've lowered the gravity. I've made the jumps more consistent. So hopefully people can just focus on the world and the story. Like, I don't know about you, but that is something that I thoroughly enjoy. I didn't think it would, like, anything would really, like, bump this game up to make me enjoy it even more. But, I mean, developer commentary that you can just walk up to and interact with, that's, I mean, I guess that's one way to do it. Coming from a film background, that's probably why the game... The music is so on point, and cinematically, it's it's just really pretty. So let's not rag too much on the mechanics of it. He actually went out and made a video game. Also, I feel a little nauseous when we're falling that far. What is this line on the ground that we could see from so far away? Is it a line of blocks? Uh, does it say anything? Barber shop. It's interesting. Um, we will turn the commentary mode off because we do want to experience the game first before we experience dialogue about the game. We need to jump up here. I don't think so. I think we need to take the butterflies here to go up that cliff but first we gotta dig in the digging spot and I have to resist my incredibly strong urge to uh to just jump as I'm running I like the low camera angle run through the forest some solidly big trees after he drove me home from the police station I blew up at him saying how I never wanted to be like him, how I was going to be someone and leave that hick icebox for good. He just looked forward at the road with tired eyes. I took out that bluegrass tape from the cassette deck and chucked it out the window. In my sage teenage Made wisdom, it. I thought I had proved the ultimate point. But my dad had a different idea. He slammed the brakes, slowly bowed his head while gripping the steering wheel, and finally looked at me. All he said, like it was a polite request, was, make this right. I sat there in silence, fuming, but I eventually got out and combed every square inch of the woods, muttering profanity after profanity. I found it 30 minutes later, near a small waterfall off the road. I went I'm back to the truck, put the wet tape back in, and sure enough it worked. We didn't speak another word to each other the rest of the night. Wow, I knew you were a crazy teenager, bud. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It surprises me, too. It's like I didn't really know who that kid was back then. I bet my dad thought the same thing over and over. It's almost like he was saying, make this right to himself more than to me. Ooh, this game is... Absolutely emotionally taxed, but I guess that's the point. We gotta get up there somehow. Maybe we need to take... Oh, do we have to get... Oh, also, it's it's good that we didn't figure it out yet, because there's that little star that we didn't get. 
I think we have to take this butterfly and maybe go get the other butterfly. That way we can do an even more powerful jump. I don't know if they stack. That's my guess for now. Also, personally, I'm going to turn the subtitles off. Let's go back to the game. Oh, all right. Well, let's get let's get these butterflies first, and then we'll go get the other ones. And then maybe it'll be enough to just boost us up that hill. I have I have no knowledge of whether or not they stack. I feel like it's actually kind of ridiculous to expect that they do, but we'll see. Oh, there's more butterflies over here. Okay, they seem to stack. Ah, maybe we get... Okay, so a better way to get that one over there is by doing this. We gotta go up, drop down. And then we got... We got three sets of butterflies. Our heart is aching. But hopefully we'll get, like, a super boost to jump up here and then find another way to be slightly emotionally trained. Holy crap. No, that was, that was a good boost. Ooh, this is the this is the purple and yellow truck. He was right about it being ugly. It's not a pretty truck, but I mean that's no reason to be mean about it. But I like the exploration of this game. Very much so. Oh, there's Okay, that's probably actually what the butterfly over there was for. The one under the rock is probably to get this one. I'm assuming it's going to be a little too far out of the way. Yeah, just just a hair outside. So this guy, I, I could I can definitely understand why he's saying he's coming from a film background. Okay, I think I still need to double jump. Butterfly boost is nice. But we still need to make it just a little bit higher. Don't be fooled with uh, the fact that your heart hurts. You you still need to do you still need to do all of the 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 platforming. It's not. I mean, it, what it said in the last commentary track about it being frustrating. It's it's not that frustrating. If anything, I think it's honestly fine. It makes the game last just a little bit longer. Definite journey vibes. I don't know if that's what he was going for. But that's that's my takeaway from it so far. That's just a, a beautiful, relaxing adventure that makes you think a little bit, you know? I'm here for the beauty, hopefully you're here for the story and the beauty. Maybe you're just here for the music, maybe you're here because of me. I don't know, whatever you're here for, thanks for showing up. Call your dad, tell him, tell him you love him, say hello. If you got anything you two are fighting about, dude, just brush it aside. My friends would laugh about that night and talk about how crazy it was. And, and I laughed say. along, pretending it didn't bother me. But it did. I imagined my friends growing old in the bush, unable to find that thrill in those godforsaken ice fields. It's like those mountains were a literal wall, keeping me from leaving. The barber all shop. I would have to look forward to are lumber yards and evening beers. I had to climb over. That was my only goal for a long time. Ooh, we're gonna climb over right now, bud. Yep, okay, so you need three. No! I... I... Uh... <laughs> okay, now I understand why it's like some people find it frustrating. Ooh, they're so far away and we can't actually get there any faster. Dude, speedrunning this game is just not messing up the jumps. And not slowing down because of the emotional weights. They may be heavy, but I think there's something that we can work with. Dude, I'm hoping this will just allow us to speed up the jump here just a tiny bit. Not, not quite. 
Ultimately, I think it slowed us down. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know. I don't know all the speed running tricks just yet. Here we go. We got one. We're going over. We're gonna get two. I have to resist jumping for quite a while. Let's get a little zoom out on this. We're doing great. Honestly, this game would be fine without the butterfly mechanics. We don't really need any... Well, I mean, we don't really need any, like, intense platforming. Not that this is intense platforming. But, like, the platforming aspects being incredibly simple are fine because it's just such a story-driven game. Like, if, if it was mechanics-heavy and story-heavy... Then it would start getting a little, little out of whack because you wouldn't be able to progress through the story at the right pace if you are not like truly mastering the mechanics, which is why story heavy games or things that are more for the aesthetic like Journey or Abzu aren't like super crazy in other aspects. There's gotta be some way that we could probably overcome that wall with the butterflies or at least that's just the hope what what sad story will we hear now are you guys prepared if there was some way i could take my love of drawing and oh, turn it into a way of escape nothing would make so me happier good. i wanted to create instead of tearing trees down i wanted to move to the lower 48 not because I hated it there in Alaska. Okay, he was in Alaska. I hated the idea of it. I mean, it's probably it's Eagle like Rivers all everywhere. all that spite inside me had created this monster which followed me around my whole teenage years. I put so much energy into doing what others didn't expect of me. Why did I do that? There's one fact you're forgetting, though. If you didn't have that fire in you, we probably would have never met. You're absolutely right. Maybe the destination is all that matters in the end. But then why am I awake? Why am I seeing this fox go on her journey? And why can't I stop thinking about my dad? Dude, this guy is having one of the most insane lucid dreams ever. What are we, oh, are we teleporting somewhere? Ooh, ooh, new mechanic introduced right now uh steam vents from the field that is incredibly beautiful allows us to travel somewhere else i don't know how you guys are feeling but i am absolutely loving this game this is definitely a game where i could see just being super screenshot heavy it's so pretty i'll never i'll never shut up about that fight me this game is gorgeous you can't, you can't stop me from just going, boom, taking a screenshot. Maybe it'll happen again. Who knows? Got some stars leading us this way. An old mattress and some Coca-Cola cans. Is this college time? Who knows? Maybe it is. There's a whole forest out here. That looks like a platforming area. Ooh, the rocks getting taller in succession makes me feel like we're on the right path. Now, this is where some emotional development is sure to happen. I'm glad that he met Rachel. Good thing he had a fire inside of him. But why does he keep thinking about his dad? Just, just some regrets from his youth? Maybe is he becoming a dad himself? And then he's realizing the struggle... You just gotta remember, nobody teaches parents how to parent. They just have to learn. Like, I mean, yeah, there's books on how to parent, but people don't really know. Not that that's any excuse for having, like, horrible parents, but... If you don't get, like, perfectly along with them, I mean... They're just trying their best. There are people who have parents that don't even stick around. So if you got one, at least try it. Give, give something a little back. Write him a letter, give him a phone call. 
They'll almost certainly love it. You gotta press A? Okay, I am pressing A. Wait, what? We need E stars. And then we can press A? But didn't we just get three stars? Oh? Wait, what's... I'm, I'm somewhat confused as what's supposed to happen here. We are at least doing the stance. Okay, I don't really know what we did. I think we were just slightly in the wrong location, but we did turn on one of these rocks. So we gotta find two more. I'm assuming that's how we complete this area and then get out of here. And then we can move on to the next one. Which makes me think, I wonder if the game ends after we complete the, what, like three or four steam vents? It might be. The one thing that I found about games that are like Real, real story, cinematic, beautiful, like this, Abzu Journey. They always feel like they end too soon. It's it's a beautiful world that you don't want to take yourself out of. You just want to get immersed and then stay immersed for as long as you can, as long as you can manage. Got another pillar over there. We'll make it. First, we're gonna dig and find out what's up with this house. On our property, there were old abandoned pieces of a shed and car long left unused. And this I used to ask him all the time who those people were that left all this junk. And I'm sure he got so tired of hearing it that he made up some elaborate stories how a brown bear ate them and haunted the woods afterwards. What's funny is I think it made those people seem more real. Growing up thinking they were still hanging out like they couldn't say goodbye. I used to tell my friends how I could swear I saw spirits move near the water, and that always freaked them out. I guess it didn't bother me, because the way I saw it, they were normal people with old cars and sheds, just trying to figure out how to survive and be happy in the middle of nowhere. It was Dude, a I have... thought that they oh. didn't want to leave, I'm but interrupt. you know, I was a weird kid. Well... You had good company since those ghosts like living in a place where they were totally devoured. <laughs> I, uh, I have yet to go to Alaska. It's near the top of my bucket list. I would like to take a road trip there, but I mean, quarantine is probably like one of the worst times to do it. So you're definitely probably not allowed to drive in through Canada. But like, Ooh, oh, we we're so close to getting the last one. We almost did it on our first try. Like, I, I definitely want to drive there. The one problem is, if I drove non-stop, it would take like three and a half days. United States is so big, especially the part of it that is on the different side of a different country. But that's okay. One of these days, I'll make it up there. Hopefully, uh, it's not as emotionally taxing as playing this game is. <laughs> I just want it to be a, a fun adventure up up in the Yukon. I don't know. People from Alaska. What are you, what are you doing? How do you feel about being from Alaska? Hopefully you're having fun. As from everything I've seen, it's a beautiful place, but definitely feels like it's kind of middle of nowhere stuff. But that's okay. As long as you... As long as you enjoy where you are, it doesn't really matter if it feels like it's in the middle of nowhere. Because with the advent of the internet and everything and everyone being connected to each other, you're never really in the middle of nowhere. You're always somewhere. Never truly alone. Even at my most distant at the times when I detested him the most. He kept oh, reaching out. A knife? For a year straight, he asked me every week when we were going camping. I thought he was just dense. Eventually, to shut him up, I agreed. We carried out the worn lawn chairs from the garage and set up a cinder block campfire at the site we'd always used behind the house. We walked down the mountain path 
Talking in the warm sunshine, we only got a couple months of the year. Those three obsidian rocks shimmered alongside the shore, almost like sparklers pressed against a dark window. I'll never forget that wet stone on my feet, or how those massive mountains looked even bigger in the lake's reflection. I felt small, but grateful. As the sun set, my dad found something I hadn't seen for a long time. The tree where I'd made my first carving when I was six. I hadn't even carved it. My dad had helped me, but I still called it my tree. Something about seeing my name there made me open up, and we talked about everything that night in that old camouflage tent. I told him how much I love sketching and design, and how it would be a dream to study architecture in Seattle. I told him how I didn't get along with my friends much anymore, but that I didn't mind being alone. He told me he was there for me, and he joked that if all he had to do was write my name on a tree to finally get me to talk, he would have left me carved logs with novels on them in front of my room every morning. <laughs> I don't know why it took me that long to realize it, but it was then I knew how much he had sacrificed for me. This guy's got a good dad. We'll do one more. My dad built a lot of stuff in his free time. If he wasn't watching fly fishing or reading Tom Clancy novels, birdhouse. he was carving something. He made tons of birdhouses. Not that he was into bird watching, but I think he really missed working and adding on to the home. If he couldn't afford the time to build onto our own house, he would have to settle with watching birds move into their little homes. We kept an old mattress in the bed of that ugly yellow truck. So we would drive it deep into the woods and then watch the birds fly into their houses while the sun set. Usually it was accompanied by venison jerky or a cold coke, but not a lot of talking, which is how we both liked it. Ooh, this is one of the games where it's like, uh, oh man, I'm, it's, <laughs> The game is hitting me a lot harder than I thought it would. It's, um, this is definitely one of the games where it's like, already I can tell, sit back, it's like, why do you love video games? It's not, it's not because of Bomber Grounds, it's not because of Modern Warfare, that's kind of a funny little texture bug. Look kind of pretty. It, but it's, it's because of games like this, it's like, why do you love movies or TV shows? Because... More so because of the stories that go along with it. And it's just another way to convey a message. And it's in a really beautiful and interactive way. Interactive movies, interactive TV shows don't really work out so well, but interactive games are just what games are. Ooh, and they hit on all the right notes sometime, and this game is almost one of them. The one, the one point in which it's suffering, and not really suffering, but just the one point of improvement that I could see happening is just simple mechanics. But again, he said in the commentary, he's not a game dev primarily, he's an artist. Which I mean, not that game devs aren't artists, but he's just an artist in a different regards, being one that makes movies, or at least works on movies more so than making games. I'm sure that is a very difficult uh, change to make. I think we'll get these stars. Actually, we'll go up and do one more. But yeah, the three obsidian stones. So now we know what path we're lighting up. We have to ultimately go... Like, through that valley? Or is that the end? It might turn to the side. But again, it might not. This is great. This game is great. Definitely go check it out for yourself. I'm sure I'll at some point in the future get around putting the link in the description. Go check it out for yourself if you want to. I don't know how we can make it up there. Maybe there's some butterflies around. If there's a surprisingly difficult jump, I'm sure you'll have put a notification on it, or at least in an area where we should be jumping from, about how to get it. We're at 73 sparkles. 
73 uh, memory shards. I don't know how you want to count it. I guess the path did curve to the left. But we might have missed those other two little shards of light. I don't know how much more of this I can play just in one sitting. I mean, I'm definitely going to play through the whole thing, but emotionally, how much more can I actually play of this right now, today? Something's going on up there. Trying to just trying to just lean to, to peek over it a little bit. But I can't find how to get up there. Maybe going around. This is where you finally realize that I am I'm not super skilled at figuring anything out in any video game. Especially one I haven't played before. This is the first time for all of my videos that I'm playing something for the first time. We got it. Gotta turn on the shiny obsidian rock. I think we just gotta. We just gotta pose properly on it. Or do we just have to do it when it's all the way down inside the rock? I'm not entirely sure. But this is how we get up. Okay, we do have some stuff going on here. Can we get up a little bit higher? Maybe. If we fully commit, it's still a little out of reach. I would like to finish this area in this sitting. Wait, did we get ourselves stuck? Well, I think... Well, that's not good. Can we go up here? Okay. Goodness, I'd be like... If we manage to find a, a, a seam in which to trap ourselves, now that would be a story to tell. What are you doing? Oh, I was playing a really peaceful game about being a fox, and I found one area in which we could never get out, no matter how hard we tried. He designed this rhyme to explain in due time all he knew. Boom, we're sliding down. I wanna, I wanna jump. We can get up, we can get up on top of this. This is some difficult platforming. <laughs> Getting to the areas you're not supposed to. I don't know if we, yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to get up on top of that rock. I just kind of want to more than anything else. By the, <laughs> by the, by the difficulty of just even getting to where we were kind of close to go up makes me uh, firmly under the belief that at least from here, we shouldn't be going on top of that. I also don't know if we should even be going on top of this. Okay, I might be just wasting time around here. We did find all three pillars of obsidian, so maybe that is enough of this area and that, like, bramble patch has fallen. I think that's... I think that's the direction we're supposed to go. But again, maybe we just need to explore this area over here. I know this episode's getting a little bit long. Okay, there appears to be a lot more to do. I, I really don't want to end things on me being lost somewhere, so I'll give you a little bit of validation for sticking around this long, almost a half hour at this point. And... We'll go up there and get a little bit more information. And then, on that note, we'll be done. So yeah, it, it pays to stick around to the end. We're getting a little, another heavy hit to the heart. Okay, there is, there is still something back there, but I don't know how we get to it. Or, I mean, that area, did we come from that area? I don't, I'm not entirely sure. We'll figure it out at some point, just not, just not today. We were happiest underneath the evergreens. We decided it was time to finally map out the hundreds of acres we lived on, just to pass the time during the summer. He was only free in the evenings, Our so I would spend very the day difficult. wasting time on dial-up internet and sketching, and then we would rush into the woods, 
pen and map in hand before evening fell. Sometimes the aurora borealis would cast a cold green glow on the mountainside, and we would finish our route underneath a twilight sky. Sometimes I was lonely during those summer days, but there was comfort in the routine. A lot of teenagers aren't looking for the daily grind, though. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get out, to leave your childhood home. You wanted to progress, to make something of yourself. Yeah, you're right. That house. I'm sure it's the same as how I left it. But then why does it feel so different? I doubt you're the only adult to have looked back and asked that question. Oh shit, that's deep. Yeah, no, definitely as you get older, things start hitting with a little more weight every time. There's something back there. Uh, maybe next time we'll figure out how to get there. Maybe we won't. We'll see. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you love the game itself, honestly, go buy it. Leave the developer a positive review. I'm sure you would appreciate it. It's beautiful, and I can't get enough. So there will definitely be another one of these coming out. Come back for more if you want. To be notified when it comes out, subscribe and hit the bell icon. But until next time, see ya.